Hello everyone! To those who are new in this channel, I am Engineer J, I am a civil engineer and I am also teaching as an engineering professor and we have this new topic in theory of structure, we have this um, one of methods in work energy and that is we have the virtual work method. So aside from the geometrical method uh, such as we have the double integration, we have the conjugate beam method, the moment area method, so we have also another approach in computing for the deflection and slope of at any point in our beam. So what would be the procedure of the analysis using the virtual work method in determining deflection and slope? So let's say you have a real system and this real system here co is comprised of the actual load of the beam and its supports. Now in virtual work method, you um, create a, what we call a virtual system. When we say virtual, that is an imag imaginary system. Now, like for example, if you wish to determine the deflection at point B, its equivalent virtual system is that there is a one unit concentrated load at that point at the same time. So therefore, since we are looking for the deflection at B, then we put a one unit load at point B in on its virtual system. Now, if we wish to compute for the slope, let's say slope at point C, okay, we compute for theta. So instead of using a one unit load, concentrated load, then we use a one unit couple load so this external moment here so again so to compute for the deflection you put a one unit concentrated load at, at at the concerned point then to compute for the slope then we use a one unit couple load on the concerned point okay so that's how you use virtual work method but what would be the next step now the next step would be generating a moment equation on every segment of our beam. Okay? So we use a or we compute for the moment equation using a real system. Then we also use moment equation for our virtual system. So we generate a moment equation um, by looking at our virtual system. So therefore we would have uh, this um, equations, it's a general equation, so we have to compute for the deflection, so we have integration of a 0 to L, okay, then it depends on the boundary of, um, of that segment, then we have the moment equation by looking at the virtual system and the moment equation of our real system, then over the flexural rigidity. Now for the slope, we have um, the same general equation, but the only difference is that we use a one couple load on that point. Okay? So this is different from the deflection procedure. But however, the general equations are the same. So this is now um, our general equation. So we will be applying this equation in determining both the deflection and the slope. So let's try to solve problem so that you would uh, understand the concept of virtual work um, better. So we have this example number one. So we are asked to compute the deflection and slope at point A. Okay, so let's compute. So since we are asked to compute the deflection and the slope at point A, so we will be um, putting or we will be using a one unit load and one unit couple load at point A. So again, this is our real system. And then we draw our virtual system or our imaginary system. So we have this imaginary system. So we will be computing first the deflection at point A. So we have a one unit load at point A. So this is one unit. Again, since we have a variable L so therefore and we also have a variable um, load triangular load that means our answer here would be in terms of W and L so the first thing we do here is to um, divide this beam into sections but take note since our beam is uniform from A to B again there is no change in the flexural rigidity 
and there would also no concentrated load within A to B. So therefore, we would set this as one section. So we have section A, B. Okay? So, so therefore, our boundary here, our boundary condition is when our x, let's say we refer our x from A. So this, this is our x. So therefore, our boundary condition is from 0 to L. Okay, so we generate moment equation for our real system and we have also the moment equation of our virtual system. So the first thing we do here is of course we generate the moment equation of our real system. So we can um, cut at any point between A to B. So let's say we have that and then therefore we have a free body diagram which is this one, so, okay, so we would have a shear, we assume that our shear there is positive and we also have moment shear, we assume that this moment here is positive as well. So we have x from A, so we sum up moment at, let's say, um, let's call this one as section 1,1, one, one. okay, section 1,1 one, one is equal to 0, so we have counterclockwise positive, so therefore we have M, then plus now take note since we have a varying um, height of our load let's say it's our y so we can um, use ratio and proportion in which we have the y here changes as our x also changes so we have y is to x and this equals to now the maximum load is w is to L. Again, this is by ratio and proportion. So we can express Y here in terms of W, L, and X. So we have um, W, L, X. Okay? So we have now um, our resultant force here, which is equal to... Now, again, that is only a area of a triangle in which that is one half X, Y. So that means we have one half x then times w over l x okay so we have one half w over l then we can multiply x so we have x squared times of course the centroid or the moment arm from from m and that is we have one third of x again this is the the moment arm to the centroid of our triangle is one third x okay so and this equals to zero so therefore we would have the moment equation m equals to negative one over six w x cube over l so this is our moment equation by looking at the free body diagram of our real system now let's proceed to the moment equation when we have the virtual system so, if this is our virtual system again, so we can cut at any point. So, let's say we cut at this point. So, we have this one X. So, we have the free body diagram in which this is one unit load. Okay, then if we cut at that point, let's say we have positive shear. That's only an assumption and we have positive bending moment. Okay, and the distance from A is X. So, we have here summation of moment at section 1 1 is equal to 0 counterclockwise positive we have of course the moment at 1 1 plus 1 times x is equal to 0 so we have the moment virtual and that is equal to negative x so we have the moment for real system in which we have negative 1 over 6 W X cube over L and the moment of our virtual system at section 1 1 is equal to <coughs> negative X okay so by using the general equation in which the deformation is equal to the integration of M of the real system times M one moment of the virtual system over the flexural rigidity EI dx limit from 0 to L so we have this deflection is equal to 0 L let's take 1 over EI outside of the integration so we have M here is 
negative 1, 6, W, X cubed over L times the moment of, of virtual system in which we have negative X. So we have the integration is equal to 1 over EI, 0 to L. So we have negative 1, 6, W, L. Then since we have negative X, so this would come up positive. So we have X to the fourth. So by integrating, so we set W and L there as constant. So we have 1 over EI. Then we have 1, 6, W, L times x raised to the 5 over 5. That's how we do integration using the power rule. And then we have the integration is equal to wx to the 5 over 30 L E I. So this is now the formula in computing the deformation when we have a triangular load. But since we have a limit from 0 to L, so therefore we would have um, deflection is equal to W L fifth over 30 L E I so we can and then minus the W times 0 raised to the 5 over 30 times 0 E I so we can cancel this out so our deflection now is equal to W L fourth over 30 E I and this positive value here constitutes that we have a downward deflection and that is on the same direction with the one unit load since our one unit load is acting downward and that means our deflection is also downward since we have a positive answer okay so this is now the answer for the deflection at point a when we have a triangular load in the cantilever beam we are now done with the deflection at point A, so um, we now proceed to the slope at point A. So the same procedure, we will determine or we will generate the moment equation of the virtual system. But since we are asked to compute for the slope, so instead of using a one unit vertical load at point A, we use a one unit couple load instead. So let's assume that our um, couple at point A is rotating clockwise direction. Let's say that's our one unit couple load. So we have a still a length of L. So we cut the same at point one one since this is um, uniform in cross section. So therefore we will not um, divide the beam into several segments. You will only divide this beam into multiple segments if we have change in shape or we have a change in load diagram okay so in this case we would have um, one section that is a to b and as we already have computed the moment equation for our real system so we will now compute the moment equations when we have our virtual system when we cut at one one then we would have this virtual system the free body diagram let's assume that our shear is going downward and we have positive moment so let's say this is our moment V or virtual moment and we have one unit load here so we can sum up moment at section 101 is equal to 0 counterclockwise positive then we have MV minus 1 and this equals to 0 okay again this is in X so therefore we have MV is equal to 1 so we have our moment equation at 1 1 this is 1 okay so by using the general equation again of slope we have the integration of m v times m dx over the flexural rigidity ei so we can take 1 over ei outside of the integration so we have mv is we have 1 our m is negative 1 6 w x cube over l so we have theta is equal to negative 1 over EI, then we have 1, 6, W over L, X cube. So by using power rule, so we have theta is equal to 1 over um, EI, then we have 1 over 6, W, L, 
you have x4 over 4. And we have the limit, of course, from 0 to L. Okay? So we have from 0 to L. So we have a theta is equal to 1 over EI. Then we have 1, 6, W, L times L fourth over 4. And since we have a 0 lower limit, so that means we would have a 0 answer for that. So therefore, our answer would so we have a theta is equal to negative 1 over EI then times WL cube over 24 so therefore the formula for theta at point A is equal to WL cube over 24 EI and this is negative or we have a theta A is equal to WL cube over 24 EI since we came up with a negative slope that means we have um, incorrect assumption of the rotation of our one unit couple load since our um, one unit load is rotating clockwise correct we assume that so therefore our slope is rotating the opposite uh, opposite on the direction of our one unit load and that is we have a counterclockwise so therefore our slope is in counterclockwise direction. So therefore, point A is rotating counterclockwise. Okay? And that is opposite to the assumption that the one unit load is rotating clockwise. And that we have this value of the slope at point A. So we will be using this formula in computing for the slope at point A. And that ends the first part of the discussion on virtual work method and in the second part we will try to solve another example. So if you wish to watch the second part of this video, I have posted the link in the description below. Thank you guys but please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. See you on my next video. Thank you and God bless.